Well, hi, thanks for joining me in my shop again this morning. Uh, so, uh, last video ended with me essentially finishing the calibration process on this tube tester, which kind of largely worked, um, except for one particular test completely failed, one calibration process. So, I really want to try that again. Um, and this is an unusual, unusual kind of uh, calibration step, if you like, and it kind of makes you do something you kind of wonder why you would ever do this. So, and what I'm talking about is that during the calibration test, you're supposed to read the current flow between this plate cap terminal and the grid cap terminal, which is kind of weird to put an ammeter between these two points. So, the, the test did not work. I never saw any current flow here. I'm thinking it's because I didn't have one of these set correctly. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't know. Um, the tester seems to work on the emissions test. This is about calibrating the emissions uh, test on here. I just realized I left this up at 50. Yikes. I got a 6F6 in there and I had 50 on here. That's not good. That's because the last tube I tested was a 50, uh, 50 L6, I think. So uh, I have this all set up now for the uh, 6F6. And we're just uh, emissions test. I'm just going to double check that right now. So a 6F6. Now very carefully. So yeah, 6.3 volts. Okay. B E B D. So B E B D. Nine on this control. So I've set this control to nine, but I. Well, I'll, I'll just carry on. The numbers here, 26431, 26431, and 0520500. Good. Put that on line, leave that on test. This is off. So basically, we're ready to do the emissions test. Oh, this is to be set to 24 on the scale here which is reversed, of course, because my control is reversed. So I have that set to 24. So we should get a valid emissions test on here, supposedly. So we're going to start with that. Um, and of course, this test, this tube tested good for GM in here and good for GM in another tester. If it's testing good for GM, I would think its emissions test must be good, too. The instructions for this uh, tube test in this tester suggests that the EM test is more important than the GM test. So th that's what they're suggesting. So in fact, maybe 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 we can find out that a, a tube can pass the GM test but fail in EM test. I kind of had trouble understanding how that could be, but let's give it a go. So I think we're all set here. Now, the first thing we're doing is we're just going to do the EM test. So I can switch this on now, I set the line, the bias is set this way, uh, we don't set it by the meter, we just set it by the dial. I still have this ammeter hooked up to, it will reflect the current flow uh, into the filament of a tube, in this socket anyway. And this guy is going to be reading the current flow, hopefully, between these two terminals. And I'm going to leave the positive one in here so I don't make a mistake, because a negative is supposed to go into the plate. Let me just see if I'm making a mistake right now. Just double check the uh, what it says here. Connect the negative side of the milliammeter to the plate jack. So that's plate, and the negative side is sitting right here. Just just leave it there on my bench, waiting. Am shunt. That is. Uh, did I just tell you that's E, that's E. Did I set that? E M shunt to nine, right, yes. Okay, let's fire it up here. You can see I still have the dim lights in, in the circuit, everything's fine. Okay, we'll take a look at the uh, meter now, see what it's showing us. So the uh, test 
tester is not in test mode. It's in the, the test button is off. So we're looking at the line with a little bit less load on it than when the tube is under test. So I'm going to flip the test button to test while the meter watches the line. Here we go. Okay, well, hardly moved. Hardly moved. In fact, it's just about perfect. Just for the sake of doing it, I'll try and bring that right down. Surely, goodness, these tiny amounts don't mean anything in the big picture. So we're now ready to read the EM test. I'll put this on bias. The bias uh, falls to zero. The bias is done differently without the meter being involved when you're doing an EM test. I'm, I'm just saying all this. I'm just I'm pounding this into my own head. That's what's going on here. Put it in test mode. We are in test mode on the meter. We're not in test mode. I'd move the meter to test. I think it's going to be a little more over here. Okay. Now, what is it supposed to come up to? Well, it's good or bad. This is good or bad. What am I saying? It's good or bad. This is a good or bad test. Here we go. And it right over to the sticky spot. It would be gooder if it could. So its maximum goodness is found in this. So, so now, we know the EM test has worked. Now what about the calibration of it? So I think the best thing we can do is from here go and read the uh, read the book. Okay, so here we are, your emissions calibration. Turn the instrument off and set up for an EM check of a 6L6, and I have a 6F6 in there. It says, as shown below, there is no nothing being shown below, but there is things being written after. Maybe this should say, as written after, or, or, or as follows. If it says shown below, is there some special EM check? Hey, is that what's going on here? As shown below. Yeah, just to prove, there's nothing being shown below here. That's it. Thank you, Bama nothing being shown below. Okay, that's not going to help. That's all filament calibration stuff. It's already been done. They're, 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 all I should be doing is just put that end meter in and look for this 20. I can't see anything else here. Turn the instrument off. Set it for an EM check. Connect the milliammeter. Complete the grid jacks. Use a meter full scale rating 50 milliamp. Connect the negative side to the plate. Here's an alternate process, but you don't need to follow it. Stick the tube in. Turn it on. 30 seconds. Adjust. The current should show up almost right away. I, well, I assume. Well, I shouldn't even assume that. I was going to say assume as soon as the tube warms up, but this current may actually be flowing kind of outside of the tube. Well, well, I don't I can't see. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this guy should work. So we see uh, 700 milliamps flowing. That's correct for the heater of this tube. No current. Of course, I can see any current until I put this in. Come on, current meter. We see absolutely nothing. Here we go again. So this is on test. This is on test. This is off. Okay, maybe I gotta put it on test. That would make some sense. Test. Ah, this guy dropped. That's a little odd. How come that that, uh, that dropped? No current. Again, th so this test is failing. So let's let's take a look at the schematic at this point. I'm going to turn off the tester. Let's look at the schematic. See if we can sort out what's really going on here. OK. 
Okay, so here's the uh, schematic, just to make it clear again. These are the 10 selector switches that you set, the two banks of five switches, that's what this is. This is a single rotating switch. This is the uh, short uh, test switch that rotates all the way around. Uh, and enables testing of shorts between every element in the tube. So exactly how this is wired, I, I have not put my head to this. But what's really of interest is what's going on with the plate and the grid here. So if we look at this terminal, the terminal kind of has its own switch here. Yeah, I would say uh, you got what is going on here? So this is coming over to the ring and select it out to the ring. And this comes back here. It's selected. Number four is the ring. Number four is always hooked up to the plate. So to get the plate connected to the ring, you have to move this into the position it is shown in right now. If you rotate, so what position is this switch shown in right now? It's in the correct position to energize the plate wire. Probably the test position, I, I would think unless there's something special and the instructions are lacking the special instruction. It's a little hard to believe. It's very hard to believe. So what, what position is this switch in? Come on, you gotta tell us, eh? Well, it shows a rotating arrow in here uh, this way. Rotating this way. There should be a note here, all switches in position something or other. Come on, please. Oh. Okay. Um, let's make, let's, let's see if we can. Uh, so w when you put a tube in the tube tester that has a plate terminal on the top, a plate cap, that's not so common by the way, what's more common is a grid cap, but a plate cap, a little uncommon. You put one in, you need to energize this plate cap. Good uh, engineering would say this plate cap is only energized when needed. The rest of the time it's dead because otherwise it would have B plus floating on it. And that's, you know, good engineering would say B plus only when needed. So that would say this has to be in the right position. And again, the position could just be test. So you think the plate voltage that appears here is the same as the plate voltage that appears anywhere. You know what else? It would be somewhat likely that an error would be made with this plate wire during tube testing, which would some kind of error made heavy current flow through here and pop this resistor. Of course, it has this coil sitting right here too. This is a uh, filter uh, designed to suppress oscillations. That's what all these coils are in here, this whole thing. So is this switch doing anything else? It doesn't seem to, well, what's, what's this wire? What is this wire? This wire's not connected to anything. Third one over, fourth one over. Oh, here it's connected here. Oh my, look at all this. <sighs> yeah. No, not gonna figure that out. So why don't we do this? Let's do some, uh, let's do some poking around. We'll look for the plate voltage and when it appears on this terminal uh, in terms of turning this control around here. This, this has to supply voltage to the plate in test mode or else you couldn't test it too. And, uh, you know, it's in test mode. Let's poke around. Let's poke around because I, I, I'm not sorting this out very well this way. Oh, 
something like a little more information here. So, because with the test we're working on the EM test, or appearing to work on the EM test uh, fine, it suggests the only problem is getting some voltage out of this plate or current out of the plate terminal. Let's go looking for it. So this is off. We're in test mode. Test mode here. I'll put this online. Switch on the power. You see the uh, when I don't have my dim lights in, the uh, fuse light uh, operates just like the dim lights would. It brightened right up there for a moment. Okay, so we're looking for a voltage in here, I guess relative to the uh, chassis. I, that's what I would imagine. And it should be a positive voltage. Anybody see what I'm about to do? You're screaming, Jimmy, don't do it. <laughs> Volts, uh, volts DC or AC? Let's let's uh, let's. Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm gonna end up putting a scope on this in the end. Let's just leave it on. It's on DC this time. Okay, so we're not in test mode. You kind of wouldn't expect any voltage here. Put it into test mode. Nothing. That's kind of weird, eh? What would you think? Let's put it on AC. Cause this this thing this thing is using. Strange signals there. Oh, okay. Three volts sitting there now. Okay, three volts. Test. Three point eight volts. Test off. <laughs> Why is my meter doing that? Why is it showing an additional? Showing four digits, but when I turn this on, overload. I'm not reading this meter right. Something funny going on. 3.86 volts. Three point eight volts. It's just another thing this this meter is bizarre. You know what this will show? This thing actually has a uh, a graph. Uh, <laughs> somewhere in here is a graph. Yikes! It's still saying three volts, and I don't even have it hooked up to anything. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so I see what's going on here. So, in one case, when I'm taking a reading, there's nothing there, and yet I'm getting a number just like I'm getting it now. And that would be right now with the thing off test. For some reason, it likes to give four decimal places. What's it doing? It's, doing, yeah, it's proving me wrong, of course, but then when I put it on test, it gets a, a more certain voltage. Ah, bogus thing this is. It's just not... Not happening. Let's just go between the grid and the... Again, I have no clue what to expect here. The instructions are actually the other way around. But I'm using uh, voltage right now, so it doesn't really matter. The other way uh, should have the negative lead over here. It shouldn't really matter. Still on AC volts. I 
don't know what to make of any of this. Test. Some chance you need this in test position to make the test work? Test. There's just nothing there. Uh, what are the chances the instructions are missing something? It's much more likely I'm still missing something here. I'm going to put this control into its total neutral spot here. What, what if we do that? Is there any voltage there then? This is just crazy, crazy stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Test. Just something exciting would be good at this point. Talking about exciting, I got in here a little uh, late this morning because I was watching a 1969 movie called marooned about uh, American Apollo astronauts uh, getting stuck in orbit and having to be rescued. Now, this is kind of interesting. I, I didn't know this movie any, even existed. Um, so the movie was made about or, or uh, came out into the theaters a few months after Apollo 11 landed uh, guys on the moon and a few months before Apollo 13. Now, this movie kind of depicts uh, what happened on Apollo 13? Uh, not quite. It's a different story. They're they're trapped in orbit. They, I don't think they ever went to the moon. I missed the first half hour of the movie anyway. But it's kind of freaky in a way to watch this movie, knowing that all these actors and all the story and all that stuff and all the people in the theaters all watching this movie back when it came out didn't realize that they were being prepared for what was really going to happen just a few months later in Apollo 13. So. Uh, if you want to watch a movie that's a little heavy on old technology and a little light on story, a little light on story with a pile of good actors, watch the movie Marooned. Try, try to watch that. There's more than one movie named Marooned, so you, Marooned, so you got to make sure you get the right one. Okay, I left that complete distraction over. What happened here? When I had this off, this one off, I never noticed. Look at that. So that, so putting it here breaks the heater. Is that, is that true with the short test? Can I do the short test like this? I don't see why not. Anybody see why not? Short test. So the short test breaks the, the uh, current. That's interesting. And then when you come back to the test spot, the current is restored to the tube filament. Okay, another little lesson learned. That's interesting. But we're not getting anywhere here. We're still not getting anywhere with this. So what else could it be that would... Yeah, we're not getting anywhere. That would keep the plate current. Plate, plate voltage. So is this valid what I'm doing up here? Even. I need to find a tube with a plate cap, read the settings, and figure out which one of these has to go where to energize the plate cap. Doesn't make any sense because I'm following the instructions to do this test. So this should be enough. This should be it. Okay, still uh, just a huge question mark. I think we're gonna have to go for the uh, open or open component or something like that because really there's just nothing happening here at all. And you know what? You know what? I could I could kind of I was gonna say maybe in the course of doing this test, somebody earlier burned out the resistor that this test is relying on. I don't know. Let's flip it over. Look at a few parts, see if we can figure out who the bad actor is. That's a real scary notion. Wires everywhere. Okay, we're gonna flip this over this way here. You know, 
we can just flip it up this way. Let's flip it up this way. That's a little easier to do, I think. So here's the big switch with uh, all the short settings on it. Here's the uh, coils that are supposed to suppress trouble. Um, they're all dark brown except one of them. One of them is shiny copper. I could feel some heat in that. Let me just make sure everything's turned off. I can actually, I'm going to pull, pull it out here. Make absolutely sure. Nah, I'm imagining it. Unless it's coming from somewhere else. No, no, I'm just imagining it. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of curious that one of these uh, would be not. Uh, would not have any varnish on it. I'm pretty sure it's a varnish cover. So I'm get the close-up camera on this in a minute. We'll take a closer look at this stuff. Now, would that be the one that potentially has burned out in some way? I, pretty tough to burn out a wire coil like that. You'd think other things would burn out. And where's the resistors? These things are paralleled with resistors on the schematic, but I don't see them up here at all. feeling heat here. I think maybe it's just the two. That, huh? I mean, it's been a while now since this is operated, so I can't imagine you'd find too much heat kind of packed in one spot anymore. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. I think I think it's just the residual heat of having these tubes in. Okay, back to what we were doing here. So, uh, I could simply look for continuity through this coil. We could, we could do that. That's a quickie. Let's do the quickie. this should really just read zero pretty well. Eh? Maybe the, uh, you know what, the resistor is inside the coil. Zero. Yeah, I think what they've done is they wound the uh, wire around the resistor. So there's a resistor inside all these. That's got to be for sure what they've done. So uh, no, I have no idea why this one is colored copper and the rest are not. Let's take a close look for any evidence. Uh, wait a minute, can I figure out which one of these is? Yeah, I can. You know what? These these wafers are identified on the schematic. What are the chances this outer wafer is the one I'm after? Um, so the terminal, plate terminal is here, is here. There's a black wire. Yeah, good luck on that. There's a black wire. <laughs> There's lots of black wires. So maybe I can figure out which wafer it is that is on its way to that uh, plate terminal. Let us take a boo. So here they are. Now have they identified them? This is A, B, C. So I know this is A. I, with a pretty good hint, it's at one end or the other. There's a wire that goes right to the plate. There's a tie point right here on the actual wafer. So they've used the tie point. So I should be able to find, track this wire. Yeah, track the wire back from the plate. I'll continue that and it'll show us which wafer it is. And then we'll figure out which one of these it is from that. We can also look for plate voltage up in here. Maybe, maybe we can figure out which one this is. This is zero, zero, one. You know, I, I know which one this is. No, that's number 10, isn't it? Number 10, what does it say? I don't think it says anything special, but number 10 is just... Just hang on a sec while I take a look at the panel. 
control number 10 is just control letter O. There's no special words associated with it. So. Okay, uh, trace, trace back to wire. Right, right, right. Let's, let's do it with this guy here. Trace back to wire. Come, come little camera. Okay, so the terminal is, oh, look what it says down there. Does it say one plus 72? I don't know what that says. Looks like one plus 72. I don't know what that means, but there's the terminal. There's a black wire coming from it. A black wire. Um, That whole terminal's loose. It's got a uh, looks just like a, one of those little grippy, uh, grippy locky things. So not very good. And that's not going to cause a problem though. Okay, Mr. Black Wire. Watching the black wire. I'm following it here. I think I'm following it. I think it's this black one that's rising up here and connecting to the outside wafer. I think it's this wire right here. Let's verify that. Let us verify. We'll take our own meter again. And we are saying to the machine, are you the same as you? would look that way, wouldn't it? So on the outside here, on this wafer, it looks like there's an A and a B side, like a, like a 1 and a 2, because there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 wafers. Well, there's a lot more showing on the schematic, so it must be a front, back, or A, B, or a rear, front, or something. This is the one we're interested in, right here. So this, you can actually see how it how it goes. Yeah, this terminal cannot touch the rotator. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. So this is nothing but a tie point. Let's read across here. Zero. So we're not talking burned out resistor, burned out coil. Now, the position of this switch right now appears to be connecting this black wire to this terminal for power to run through to reach here. So you think B plus would be sitting here or that current test could be run from here regardless of the position of the switch. Sure looks okay. Where, where's the switch right now? The switch is on test mode I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Let's take it off test mode. This, now this would be testing number one. Uh, this, is, this is the number one short test position. You can see this wire is now disconnected. It remains so all the way around. That's the null point. Oh, no, it isn't. That's number 10. That's a short test 10. That's the gap. And we're back to uh, test position. And again, this switch is now closed here. I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. So that would mean there's nothing here. It also says to me, uh, unless there's something more going on, that every time you run a test, the, the plate voltage is sitting you know, on, on here and on that terminal. It's always there. So if it's not there, where has it gone? I, I, I could do a voltage test here, but I can really see that this is connecting. Or is it? Is it? Is it really connecting? find out. So we should see a zero here. Yeah. The switch is certainly closing. 
So the question is, what's the problem with this wire now? Follow this guy back. <laughs> okay, so this wire is this terminal. Is it? Yeah. So this is the terminal that reaches the slider, and the selector is out here. Nowhere right now. Oh! Nowhere. There's, uh, there's nothing. Is there something in behind me? Some, sometimes these rotating switches, you know, they have a back to them. But this switch appears to be in a position of nothingness. So it looks like this wire is just getting nothing from here. So what, what's so, and that is you know what that is? That's switch zero. That's switch zero. That's switch O. Switch O. Switch O. So if we if we want to energize this wire, this switch O. Well, there's all kinds of energization coming back. Uh, is there a second wire under here? Did I make a mistake here? I think I made a mistake. I, I did make a mistake. No. No, I did not. No, nope, that's definitely the wire. Come from here, go to here, select out, pick one of these off, come over here, and be sent out on, I don't know, this wire. These, what are, these are all, I don't know, wow, alive. So, uh, so if I were in any of these positions, but not this one, this position, zero, this is position zero, and nothing's connected. That's probably true of all of them. When you're in position zero, nothing's connected. Well, what good is that? Make the settings as shown below. Put in a 6v6. Let's read that. Let's read that again. Let's read that again. Set up for an EM check as shown below. The pinout and everything of the 6F6 is identical to 6L6. Really, the only difference between these tubes is the current flow given a certain plate voltage and uh, grit. Current flow in a 6L6 is about double a 6F6. That's the only difference. Connect a milliamp here. Just reading quietly here because uh, I need all my faculties lined up on this. I, I don't get it. The, the secret must be this, as shown below. As shown below. As shown below. So uh, I'm going to go off and look for... Uh, I'm going to go off for a while and see if I can't find the shown below part. Well, that's really disappointing. <laughs> I just finished the video and realized I didn't click record. So I missed a whole pile of stuff here. Oh my gosh, I, I don't even know where it ended. Oh my, I, that's a mistake I almost never make. Well, here's... <laughs> I, I am, oh. Oh man. Well, at, at this point, I'm really happy. And I'm also really sad. So what has happened here is, uh, hey, I got it all working. But unfortunately, I didn't click record on my video. So there's a whole process I went through to figure out how to make this work properly. But, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to tell you the story. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really like it when I go through something and, you know, good stuff happens and it's all being caught as it happens. And that, that's what makes it. My videos, I think, interesting to watch, but unfortunately, all that's going to happen here is I'm just going to tell you what happened. So, so first of all, I read the instructions over very, very carefully, and in the instructions, it says, as shown below. 
And when I went looking below, there is nothing below. In fact, I'm going to put this on the screen. I can show you because someone else may very well have the same tester run into exactly the same situation. So here's the instructions. So this is the these are the instructions that I've been using down here. And nicely printed because someone rewrote them. Uh, they rewrote them uh, word for word. I checked word for word. And uh, the spot I was on was right here. Turn off, turn the instrument off, and set up for an EM check of a 6L6 as shown below, 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 below. So there's no below. There's nothing down here. Oh, yeah? If I go up to the original list of instructions, here it is here, here they are here. Emission calibration, exactly the same words written here. Turn off instrument, set up for EM check of 6L6 as shown below, but this time, look. So, I, <coughs> let me go back to the camera here. So sure enough, I had this set up for a 6L6 EM test. That's not really what should have been done with this. This should have been set in some unusual configuration that was shown in the diagram I just had up on the screen. And so I set it into that particular mode. That's really what made this whole thing work. So I was able to get a current uh, through here under this kind of setup I was able to set the current to 20 milliamps even though I'm not using a 6L6 I'm using a 6F6 6F6 run with half the current of a 6L6 uh, through the tube but I was still able to get 20 milliamps as prescribed in the instructions onto this and then I was then able to calibrate the meter by turning the right I think it's P11 down here. I got the whole thing to work. So, consequently, it's calibrated now for the EM test. And I'm just so sorry that I couldn't, that I didn't record it because it was lots of fun working my way through step by step and then finally realizing what, what the real problem was. But what is the real problem? The real problem is the structure of the manual and that it's been partially rewritten. And that, that's what kind of threw me off. So at this point, where we're at with this uh, tester now is it's really completely calibrated. Um, I, I think it's probably in really good operating shape. But from here, I will be replacing this, this control. Uh, when the new one comes, I will check through it all again. And at the end of that, I'm pretty sure I've got a great tube tester that I'm very familiar with. There's still a few more functions here, uh, like once once I have this thing functioning properly as a tube tester, then I've got this gas test to investigate, I've got this noise check to investigate, and probably one or two other things in here that uh, could, could still be uh, investigated, not the least of which is testing a light bulb in the, <laughs> the light bulb test hole. And then beyond that, what follows next is my other tube testers. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with them yet. I may leave them as is, or I may take them apart and do all this kind of stuff with them. I, I'm not exactly sure. Both my other tube testers appear to work fine. So that would leave me with four uh, tube testers that I regard as reliable. One emissions tester, two GM testers, and one GM and emissions tester. So at that point, once I have four tube testers, I am then going to go to town on my vacuum tube collection. Uh, and all four of these testers. And I'm going to find out if there is consistent operation among the testers and the tubes and all that kind of stuff. And by the end of that, I'll probably be 70 years old. Uh, that, that's a long time from now, just in case you think that's next week. No, that's, that's a long time from now. So that's the plan. Uh, sorry once again I didn't get all that on live video, but uh, it is what it is. I, 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 I'm not going to go through and pretend to be doing it. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay, but the good news is I got to where I needed to get to. Fantastic. So thanks a lot, and uh, I'll see you on the next video, which may be a week from now.